right, hopefully third time is the charm. We're gonna stick with it this time. Hope things stay okay. And uh, if there's buffering, we're gonna deal with it. Welcome guys, sorry for that little mishap kicking things off. This is Black Six from Busy Power. And uh, here is the lovely set we've got to build today. Oh, let's change that, uh, that overlay. Nope, I didn't do it. There we go. So the recently released 75275 A-Wing Starfighter from the LEGO Star Wars Ultimate Collector Series. Oh, you can't see that because it's below the overlay. Let's see if we can uh, shift that a little bit. Only here, ah, oh, because I just had to mess with my capture card, my audio cut out on the left channel. We'll see if we can tweak that in a sec. So yes, Ultimate Collector Series, kind of a new branding, right? Because usually it had like that circular badge. So this is kind of the more, the new 18 plus uh, branding that we've got going on. So you can see the like Griebling here on the bottom. Saw that in some other sets, but this is one of the first that has that 18 and up instead of like 16 and up. Uh, so kind of a new uh, thing LEGO is going for, kind of really saying, hey, these sets are for adults. Um, not that kids can't build them, but you know, we are acknowledging that adults like these sets and that's who we're building them for. So this set has uh, 1,673 pieces and sells for $200, which seems like a lot. Uh, definitely seems like the Star Wars tax is kind of uh, hitting in uh, full swing here with that uh, price per part ratio. Um, but it does look beautiful. Uh, I'm a you know, big Star Wars fan, so of course I had to, had to go for it. All right, so I'm glad the audio started working again. There is definitely like a loose connection back there somewhere. Uh, I've tried fixing it a few times and apparently it seems to keep getting loose if I try to play with my capture card. Once I get a new capture card, uh, which was supposed to come this week, but got delayed, uh, I will dig into my rat's nest of wires and cables and hopefully fix that up. But anyway, lovely set, looks beautiful in the front. Switching around to the back. So you can see, of course, it comes with a display stand with a spot for the pilot. Um, set is going to be 16 and a half inches long, 10 inches high, uh, looks beautiful from all angles, that lovely dark red and white color scheme with a nice trans yellow on the engines. What kind of car did I get? Now you're going to make me try to remember, I think it was an uh, Aver Media, let's see, I can probably pull it up real quick. As we open this up, do, do, do Intel, no, let's see what it. All right, lots of, I see a lot of Technic come out of there. All right, I cannot find that easily because the email appears to have uh, disappeared from my inbox, so have to get back to you on that as far as what kind of card I got, but I did some research. Hopefully it does some more encoding on the capture card versus relying on my computer to do it all. And uh, with luck, that will increase the performance, to make things not so laggy. Although things seem to be going pretty decent right now, knock on wood. I do have some wood here. So the canopy piece comes in its own separate bag. So that's nice, keep that from getting scratched up. Looks like we have 11 bags. Hey there, Toa Kohaka Nuva. Welcome. It is kind of interesting that this, this is clearly a stand bag, but we do have parts after the stand. Um, I'm wondering if that's maybe like landing gear or something that can't actually support the weight of the ship. 
or just other details that are easier to add on once it has already been put on the stand. So yeah, 11 bags plus the canopy plus our big 8x16 tile for the uh, stand and then our instructions and stickers. Oh, so in answer to your earlier question, uh, Toe Pi, um, yeah, there are, are a bunch of new sets on the giveaway form as far as like what sets are we going to build in the future. And that is me rating my personal collection uh, since we're kind of running low on sets from Lego. Uh, I think after this, we just have the um, Star Wars boost set. So here's one sheet of stickers. This one is on a clear background. So this is probably gonna be for the canopy. So it'll be a pain in the butt to apply. And then uh, here's another one. There's surprisingly few stickers um, all told. Right, I mean, this one's clearly for the uh, the base, and then there's only like uh, two, three, four, five, six other stickers other than the canopy. So that's kind of uh, nice and refreshing to see that so few stickers. And if you look at the instructions, you, know, you can see two of them are gonna be right here, and then the big ones are gonna be on the engines. So uh, not bad. Hey, Box Commander, welcome. So we do have some nice dark red right off the bat, but also quite a few Technic parts. So we start off the uh, internal structure, a lot of 3 module Technic friction pins. All right, so the first page of the instructions kind of shows the set on display in a very modern home with some uh, Lego books, uh, Jonathan Bender's Lego A Love Story, Lego Collector, some other stuff. Got some information about the design team for Lego Star Wars. Maybe some original Ralph McQuarrie concept art of the A-Wing. Some storyboards from Return of the Jedi. A little interview with uh, Jens Kronvald Frederiksen, who's the uh, creative director for LEGO Star Wars, and I guess one of the main designers. Uh, my audio is still going in and out. All right, we'll fix that in a sec. Hans Burkhard Schlomer, the uh, designer of the set. Got some pictures of the actual models that they used on screen in Return of the Jedi. and then we get it all in French and Spanish. And this setting it to be a mono input would not help in this case because of how everything is wired up. Because it is actually set to be mono. Got our brick separator. But then it goes out on a left and right channel to go into my capture card. Let me know how to the worst. Connection right there. All right. Maybe better, maybe worse. And that is definitely one thing I'm looking forward to, uh, getting that new capture card, as I'm not going to be using the Elgato software anymore, so hopefully I have uh, some more control on that, but that is currently not a setting that I can do in Elgato that I'm aware of, just treating as a mono source. so about the same. Alright, do I really want to dig into here? Alright, how about now? 
Left, right, center. No. Symmetric with how the Technic pins are going in. Kind of curious to see how this all lines up. Oh, it's good now. Hopefully, it stays. I will try to not move anything. software, I think I've definitely outused the usefulness of the Elgato software, so the current plan, once the new capture card comes in, is to switch to uh, Streamlabs OBS, I'll give that a shot, seems to be the current hotness, so we'll see how that goes. If that doesn't work well, we'll go to just regular OBS. We'll have to see when the capture card decides to actually arrive. So how's everyone doing this weekend? Week 592 of COVID. I feel like uh, in some regards the COVID stuff is the least of our concerns at this point with all the other things going on in America at least. It's a crazy world out there. Hope everyone is safe. Going back to work on Monday, that's, I guess, a good thing. I, I hope it's a good thing for you, BFA home. I mean, I've been primarily teleworking, but I did have to go into the office one day this week. It was actually kind of nice to get that... Um, sense of normalcy back. It's not a good thing, BFA home. All right. Let's 
certainly is an interesting situation. I know uh, the town I live in is starting to open up a bit. Outdoor seating at restaurants and things like that. Um, then I'm, I have friends who are in cities that are very much still in lockdown, so it kind of depends on where you are. I guess to some degree, like, uh, Every government feels, local government feels the situation is, and, you know, it depends on how many cases and stuff there are, and the likelihood of spreading. There's a lot going on. Yeah, that does seem like an odd combination there, BFA Home. Huh? Well, they're sending you back to work, but the store is probably still going to be empty. Alright, so this is a very odd start to our build here. Um, can see very little, there's very little symmetry going on. There's lots of Technic pins, we've got like a tile and some jumpers, a little kind of snot action going on back here with uh, some bricks and plates on Technic pins so they're pointing backwards. Um, and now it's looking like we might be making something that's somewhat mirrored and is going to attach to the other side, so then I guess that will kind of give, start to give us the symmetry, but at the start, it's uh, kind of a little confusing. But hey, I like that, because it keeps the build interesting, keeps you thinking, trying to figure out what exactly it is you're building. Keeps you from getting bored. I think one of the most interesting things for me with the whole COVID situation is what is the new normal going to be when we all come through this on the other side? How are things going to change long term or are they just going to eventually go back to normal and everyone's going to forget about it? But the UCS Slave One definitely was an awesome build with lots of cool angles and stuff like that and different techniques. So glad to hear that this build is up there on that level.
feel like the sleeve one is actually one of the easier um, UCS sets to display because it has a fairly small footprint. It's just kind of like a taller set. So, you know, as long as you have um, like a small-ish space, like a platform that you can put it on, you can display it fairly easily. It's like definitely a lot easier to display than say like the, the X-Wing or the Y-Wing or the Snow Speeder, I would say. You know, I hadn't actually noticed that. Yeah, the instructions are printed on black. Um, and I haven't had any issues so far, even though there are black pieces. The black parts usually have a, a white outline here, so they obviously stand out on the black page. Um, well, yeah, so far there haven't been any issues like determining what color the pieces are or, or anything like that. It's been pretty straightforward. Alright, so we built a thing with a gear on it, and the classic uh, back of the Toa gear, going back to 2001, but the gear, I guess it does turn, I'm not sure what it will turn, if anything. Yeah, I'm not sure why uh, they would have felt the need to make this change uh, with the background, but I don't think it really impacts like the readability of the pages or anything. Now, at the same time, it like uh, for me at least, it doesn't make the set feel like it's more premium or something like that which might have been what they were going for, because it's you know, the whole 18 plus thing. Okay, look, Lego is dark and edgy and 18 plus. We got black backgrounds on our instructions. <gasps> So now, it's time to connect our two halves. And they only are connecting with uh, two pins in the back right now. But it is suddenly looking uh, a lot more symmetric, although a little wobbly. Uh, it is interesting to note that gear that we put in is a bit off-center. Um, so that's kind of interesting. We'll see what that does, if anything, as we go on. Alright, now 
looks like we're using some dark red plates to kind of lock the two parts together a little more. So we got these all the, what are they, like four by 10? Yeah, four by 10 dark red plates that we're putting on the bottom of the front here to lock the two halves together. So we got a six by 10, some nice variety in the dark red. And now we're just flipping the whole thing upside down to cover up the bottom. Dark mode instructions. Interesting way to look at it. So it's looking like this might end up being the hole where it attaches to the display base. Stay like that, unfortunately. Um, which, yeah, then is kind of odd with the gear here. Like, is that gear the stop for the stand, or is the stand gonna somehow like wedge into the gear so it, once it goes on the stand, it can't like fall off as easily? Which could certainly be an interesting idea. I don't know. Uh, I don't think I've ever really had an issue with UCS sets falling off the stands. Usually gravity holds them in place pretty well. gear, which I don't think it can be at this point, just the way things are made, but it was like connected to the landing gear, so when you put put it down on the stand, like the landing gear retracts, and when you, or I guess, yeah, the landing gear retracts, and when you take it off the stand, the landing gear extends. Of course, then you have an issue with if you want to put the landing gear up once you take it off. That might not be such a good idea unless there's an alternate way of extending the landing gear. Just making this up as I go, folks. Doesn't mean every idea is going to be a good one. Gear is going to be used. Okay. We'll see how this uh, goes in. Thinking for the gun swivel. That'd be kind of interesting. There is a bevel gear in here, so it could, in theory, be used on that. Bill of spoilers.
original V-Wing isn't canon, but they did make a new V-Wing, I guess a new old V-Wing. One of the uh, ships in the Clone Wars is considered, or is called the V-Wing. Yes, there was an old extended universe viewing that is no longer canon. So yeah, this definitely looks like it's going to be for the uh, gun turning mechanism to add some... Um, what, did I mess something up? I messed something up on here. Yeah, I put these two things, the two stops uh, at opposite sides so it can't actually turn. That would be an issue. So you can see the little red one by one round tiles. So they can go from this position to that position and they can't go any further. And the gear here is just adding friction so they don't move too freely. The V-Wing from the Clone Wars era is definitely canon. I believe it definitely appeared in the TV show. In the Clone Wars TV show. There was a V-Wing airspeeder from like the old EU days that is no longer canon. I think it's like the V-Wing Torrent. There is the one from uh, the Clone Wars. I think it might have been even in um, Revenge of the Sith. I thought it appeared in the beginning in the Battle of Coruscant or over Coruscant. Siege, the Siege of Coruscant, something like that. Now, all that said, all that discussion about what viewing we're talking about out of the way, um, you know, it certainly is possible that uh, they could bring the old viewing back into the canon. They've done that several times already with other ships. Uh, I think that probably the most prominent one so far is the Tide Defender being a major plot point in Rebels. Um, then there's certainly been other ones, I'm sure. Ah, now I'm trying to think. There are definitely some, some ships in that appeared in Rebels um, that when they were there, I'm like, oh, that's that was from uh, like um, like the Jedi, I think some one of the ships from the Jedi Knight series of games shows up um, 
the carrier ship that appears in Rebels a few times that uh, the Rebels steal an Imperial like fleet carrier at some point. That was originally an EU ship. So yeah, they've definitely done it a few times. The there's a definitely a um, Imperial like cruiser designation that they brought in from the EU. So there's nothing saying they can't do that with the V-Wing. V19 tor torrent is not the same as the viewing, so I may be getting some Star Wars ships mixed up in my head now. No. I'll have to have it head over to Wikipedia after the stream today. Get my facts straight. Speaking of Star Wars, though, I just finished reading the new Star Wars book today that came out earlier this week. Uh, Queen's Peril, kind of set pre-episode one to uh, during episode one. So it starts out before the events of Phantom Menace and then kind of catches up with Phantom Menace a little bit. and kind of shows some things from a slightly different perspective from a certain point of view. It's was, it was pretty good. I'm not sure I liked it quite as much as Queen's Shadow, which this is kind of the prequel book for. Um, but I definitely enjoyed Queen's Peril. Kind of get uh, quite the in-depth look at Padme's handmaidens and how they were all selected really kind of get to know all their different personalities. It was really interesting seeing the events of Phantom Menace kind of from some different perspectives. Interesting Technic System additions on here. Not sure exactly what those are going to be for. Some little interesting construction points though. Not sure if this is going to be the front or if this is the front. I think this is. I think this is probably going to be the front. So these may be for attaching the kind of sloped sides that we're going to go in here. We still got a ways to go before we get there.
And yeah, there's definitely a, an era of LEGO Star Wars sets where I was not uh, paying nearly as much attention to them. I firmly blame the prequels and the uh, Clone Wars movie for kind of getting me out of Star Wars for a while. Because, you know, when, when uh, Disney bought Star Wars, you know, they officially said, like, all that stuff's not canon anymore. But even before that, like, the prequels made so much stuff not canon. And as someone who read a lot of the books before that, I was like, no, I don't want that stuff to be canon. And then plus, you know, the prequels just, for me, weren't as good as the original movies, so... Kind of made me less invested in it. Well, I came back around. Well, this is pretty nice. We got the one by three jumper plate in dark red. Very lovely color for that. going on here? There'll be some interesting techniques going on. You can see the designer stuff. I had some fun with this one. front here has got a lot going on. There was a lot of like build up with system pieces right there just so we could put these little 
Technic contraptions in and have that spacing work out so these could be kind of perfect so they can't go down any further, have enough support. I think there's probably a different way they could have done that. But I guess it's Lego, right? So there's always a different way you can do it. That's the beauty of it. the seat that we're making here. Mixel joint here, that's supposed to be the, the control stick. There's a little bit of movement, and we're about to put the seat on there. And that's going to be it for bag two. Alright, that clicks on there. And yeah, so already bag two, we've got some of the finished look on here. We've got a little cockpit seat. Obviously, I'm sure we're going to be building up around this and making it a lot more finished, but you know, the A-Wing is a pretty small, compact fighter, so it kind of makes sense that uh, you know, got to get that seat in there early. And at least now we know that the front is this way, and the back is over here very hollow in the back, which is probably a good thing to keep help keep the weight down. Got our gun system there, and you can see that that is indeed where the stand is going to go. Alright, on to bag three. And we're going to start working on the front wedge there. And we're going to have, I guess, our first stickers probably. Kind of excited that it's actually going to have the, the gap in the middle. That really serves no purpose from a functionality perspective that I'm aware of, but you know, there's a there's a key key design element of the Y, y wing, A wing. So it's good to see that uh, it'll be captured here, which. Is something that's like kind of notoriously difficult in the minifig scale ones for them to do. Finish, once we finish bag three here, we will be doing our first uh, giveaway for today. So we'll put up that link when we get a little closer to finishing. But I'm sure most of you know the URL by heart, bzpower.com slash giveaway.
got a lot of uh, these pieces in this bag here, which looks like we're going to be used partially at least to attach these uh, blue Technic beams and somehow probably used to attach here so we can kind of get the, the slope down the middle, that, you know, iconic look there. has been going on, especially since we didn't stream last week, I mean, yeah, mainly it's been uh, quarantine, 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 but in addition to the new Star Wars book, I've been reading some older Star Wars books, I finally have gone back and started reading um, the Star Wars Rebels book series, uh, The Secret Empire series of four books it doesn't it's not like all uh, Star Wars Rebels characters all the time but they do feature in a few of the books and it's set primarily on the fall during that era of uh, the Star Wars universe it's been pretty good so far it's uh, targeted more younger readers but always interesting to get some more stories in the Star Wars universe that aren't all based on, you know, the main characters of the Skywalker saga. And plus, even though they're not in, like, every minute, it is kind of cool to see the ghost crew again. Well, there's definitely been some interesting uh, rumors around this second season of The Mandalorian. Speaking of the ghost crew, talks that uh, Soka or Sabine might show up, among other notable characters. Be interesting to see how that season goes. All right, so I think this is going to be part of that notch in the front. So we've got a wedge plate here. Of those headlight snot brackets and that's going in there to kind of narrow this down a little bit and I'm, you know, I assume we're going to put one on the other side kind of narrow even further to kind of give it that like angle as it goes towards the middle oh hey look at that do one on the other side go there's that notch coming together helping get that iconic look and this has apparently all been the bottom so now attach this with uh, some Technic beams you can see that that will be able to kind of go up and it's presumably this is gonna go flat with the uh, top part of the wedge starting to look a little bit like a spaceship.
I'm sitting here listening to the music. Reminds me that uh, our contest for the BZ Power Twitch channel uh, ending tomorrow, I believe. You can submit your own music and and uh, you might hear it here. So your own songs you'd like to hear us play and we'll give you some free Lego as a prize. Haven't checked the uh, entries in a couple days, but I think we actually have not had any music submissions at all yet. So if you got something you want to submit, pretty good chance we're going to use it. You're going to get some free Lego out of it. We've got uh, categories for emojis. And uh, subscriber badges as well. You can submit and potentially uh, we'll use them on our channel here. So you should definitely do it. Got the rest of today and all tomorrow. made these little kind of Technic beams, a bunch of connections on here, including some Mixel ball joints. And so I guess that is going to be about where this goes up to and the other one goes down to. And I assume these are going to be where the side wedges connect. or at least part of the top part. Let's start giving it that finished look. Just uh, keep the music part as an open submission after the fact. I'll plug it every time we do a stream. Still with the prizes, of course.
now we're kind of getting to a part where this is a lot more symmetric that we're doing here. We're like, all right, do this on this side. Now do that on that side. Avoiding doing the same thing twice. I like to do both at the same time if I can. Huh, yeah, I had not thought of that. The 15 long Tekken beam in blue. Not a necessarily a color you always see it in. I guess I just assume that I don't build enough Technic sets to see it come around. Or see how often it comes around. I just assumed it would be a little more common. I have quite a few of them that are used on the internal structure here, so. Hey, if you like rare Technic Beam colors, this set might be for you. Alright. Do you have some uh, dark red Nexo Knight shield pieces. The Nexo Knight's theme might be gone, but those pieces live on. Now we got our first stickers. 